the move to quarterbacks coach, what do you think is the opportunity? Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I think the, the big part of it is I'm going to do whatever job they ask me to do. So this offseason that was proposed, and I, if that's what they felt was best for the team, I was excited and jumped at the opportunity and kind of taking it in stride and, and really looking forward to doing it this offseason and into the season coming this fall. I mean, it, obviously it's the game's most important position, so how big of an adjustment is for you? Uh, I mean, I think it's uh, you're teaching different technique, a different mindset. Obviously, the understanding of the whole offense comes a little bit more into play. But other than that, it's still football, and, and you're still out there coaching the same guys, trying to get them better, trying to see where they have deficiencies and improve their game. And I think that focus doesn't change regardless of the room you're in. Obviously, it's new for you, but it's also new for all three guys, right? All three guys in your room are new to the new to the team. So does that add a level of challenge to this? Uh, yes and no. I mean, to some extent, it's a blank slate. It's a new offense for them. So I'm walking in there. They haven't heard it coached by somebody else. It's the language that they're learning. So in a lot of ways, that makes it easy on me. Um, but to your point, there's also a lot more to get through in a short amount of time. So had to really kind of you know embrace the playbook right away, get everything going. And it's not a position you can kind of piecemeal it together. Like you, first day, you got to know. Um, so that's kind of been the focus as we move through the offseason. Uh, just try and watch him like it in that meeting. Yeah, he's been awesome. I mean, he, he came in day one, just, ex, you know, works extremely hard, is very coachable, uh, competes at a really high level. I think it, he takes the job very seriously. He's been a lot of fun to coach here uh, over a short amount of time, so really been fun to work with. Obviously, there's so much involving Deshaun off the field, right, and continues to be a story. Um, did you have to, like, get comfortable with the fact that you were going to have to coach Deshaun on a daily basis? No, I think, I mean, you, you ask a couple people just about what he's about as a person. People have coached him, people around him at Clemson. You hear a lot of really good things, and in a short amount of time, I've definitely seen that. Like, I've loved working with him, was really excited about the opportunity, and it's been a lot of fun here even just in a month so far of getting to know him. Do you see the all the other stuff affecting him at all, whether it's in the meeting room or on the field, that this kind of cloud is kind of – or something's weighing on him off the field? No, I think he does a great job of coming in here and working extremely hard. I mean, you see that from all the guys on this team, and it's been something that I think is kind of a staple of who we need to be as a team in terms of the way that we prepare, the way that we go out and practice. And he's really embraced that mindset, and it's been impressive to watch. So what's the balance um, that you have been thinking about maybe in your mind um, of preparing him in this system, yeah. what you guys want to do with him, but also preparing Brissett, oh, yeah. knowing that – Injuries happen and everything, but on top of that, which is the standard in the league, there is a potential discipline that Deshaun could face. Yeah, I think, and this was true in the tight end room as well, is whether you're the first guy in the room or the fourth guy in the room, you have to prepare and plan to play every snap. Uh, I mean, the nature of this game, the nature of the way things work. So whether it's him, Jacoby, Dobbs, whoever's in that room, they need to come in ready to roll and take every snap of every game and every practice. And I think the way that that room attacks their job and, and seen it in just a short amount of time, all three of those guys have been great in doing that, and it shows up on the practice field already. What have you picked up from Brissett, early impressions from him? He's been awesome. I mean, he, he's played a lot of football, started a lot of games, had a lot of success in this league. So his experience of playing the position, being in different systems, learning different systems from the ground up has helped me as a, you know, as a coach in the room, being there the first time. Like, he's a guy you can ask questions to, and you know you're going to get a real answer because he's seen it done a lot of different ways, and he has a lot of insight to the game. How key is it to have a backup like him who he's been in these situations before where he's been a backup and then he's thrust in, into starting maybe in these unexpected situations and, and what kind of, I guess, skill set or preparedness does that maybe add for him? Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, and, and I think one of the great things is having, you know, someone like Alex Van Pelt in the room who had that role as a professional as well and just understanding what that role entails and the reality that you're not going to get every rep and that you are going to be expected to go in there and start on a moment's notice regardless of the situation. Um, whether it's the first play of the game or your first snap could be in the middle of a two-minute drive uh, where you got to go win the game. And he's been through that, as you said, and I think that brings a lot to those teams because a lot of guys coming right off, you know, from college have been the starter the whole time and gotten all the reps and they're not used to that process. And it's different and, and it's not easy and it's something that he's embraced throughout his career and we have some great resources for him to lean on in the building as well. You as the coaches, you, you, know, you make the position change. Is there anyone that you, I guess, you know, maybe friend or in the, in the business, whatever that you, you call and say, hey, I'm moving into this new role with, you know, should my plan of attack be or, you know, that yeah. type of thing? Have, oh, have for sure. This off yeah, for sure. I did it when I got here as a tight end coach, when I took over the wideout room in Minnesota, and certainly this year. Guys that you've worked with that have maybe played the position, coached the position, 
you know, the nice thing for me is I was in the room as an assistant when Kevin was the quarterback coach. So leaned on him, leaned on Alex. But you're always trying to pick up new ways to teach things, understand where guys are coming from based on who they've coached, how they've done things. So that's a big part of the process for me as I started that transition, you know, as early as February, March. Is Josh Dobbs like Jesus level smart? <laughs> <laughs> Far smarter than me. I know that. So I'm not, you know, no, he's, he's been great. Uh, he really, you know, like the other two guys in the room, has worked extremely hard to pick it up, is a very bright guy, picks things up very quickly, and it translates to what he does on the field. He, he makes that transition very quickly coming from a different offense like we talked about with the, the other two guys in that room not really having any background either. You had a coordinator interview. It, it didn't work this time. But no, what, what do you think about your future? Is that something you hope is, is in your future? Yeah, it was a great opportunity. I was really excited to, to get the experience to do it. Um, but my focus is certainly on this job and this organization. And uh, that's kind of really a day-to-day -day focus, if you will. And I know that sounds simple sure. and kind of cliche. But I, if I don't do that, I'm not going to do a good enough job here as a quarterback coach. And everything else won't matter. So that's really kind of been my focus through this offseason and going on to practice so there far is this a, spring. To, to Zach's question, though, there is a, you know, a coaching ladder. Where yeah. You, as you go throughout your career, you, you do check boxes, you know, various positions as you coach. And, quarterback coach is a pretty big one to check as you go up that ladder. I mean, is that something that you are, even though you're focused on the day-to-day -day and the, the organization, that, but just from a career standpoint, is that something you think about that, hey, I've got this opportunity to be a QB coach, and that's kind of a big deal to, to climb that ladder and, you know, maybe be a coordinator or a head coach someday? Yeah, I think it's an opportunity at some point I'd love to have, but to the point I kind of made earlier, and, and not to repeat myself, but if I don't do a great job in my job, I'll never have that opportunity. But I think certainly, you know, that goal to have that opportunity at some point in my life is, is, is definitely there. Kevin's talked about the offense will change because Deshaun's a different quarterback than you guys have had. Yep. So you, you were here for the last couple of years. How different do you think the offense will look in 2022 compared to the offense? You know I'm not going to answer that this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a specific no, I mean, I think, and as Kevin hit on, it, it always goes through your best players. So with a quarterback change, a wideout change, a tight end change, you're always going to try to highlight the things they do well and have done well throughout their career. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing it justice to your players. So certainly looking at what he's done, where he's had success, and the people that have changed around him and what may complement their strengths is going to be a big part of what we want to do this offseason training camp. And for us as coaches, we're figuring some of that out too because it's one thing to see it on game film, but to see it every day in practice, you basically say, hey, we thought that was going to be something, but really it's going to go in this direction or that direction. So I think part of that is our process right now to make sure that we're doing our job and extremely important to the offense. How good do you think these young receivers are when, when you watch? Because you see them every day, your quarterback's throwing to them. Just, I mean, it's, it says a lot that you know the organization didn't bring in another veteran and they're giving these young guys those reps and those opportunities. So just from your perspective, what do you see from them? How good do you think they really are? I think it's a great group, and I think you kind of hit on it. You know, for myself, the organization have a lot of faith in those guys as they develop, as they continue to work, and it kind of, kind of comes from the attitude the entire offense takes. We're like, hey, I'm just going to work as hard as I can, find my ceiling as wherever it is, and try to push through it. And I think they've embraced that, and you start to see that here in the spring, and it's great. I mean, for a lot of these guys, this is the first spring they've had in three years, right? So the development that's happening now, the reps that they're being able to bank, as you talked about, is so important to that process. And you certainly, we have high expectations and have been really excited about what they've done so far. Do you know Deshaun still has rush to shakers if he does? No, I mean, I think we all do. I mean, it, it, this time of year, whether you've taken 2,000 snaps or, or not, you still haven't played football in three or four months. Um, and you're working with a whole new group of guys who you haven't had a lot of reps with. So there's going to be rust whether, you know, no matter who's out there. And I think certainly this is the time of year you need to knock that off and start to get a feel for who your teammates are, where you want the offense to get. Um, so I think that's a big part of the process of the offseason. And even into training camp as you get towards the season, you look – at who we may be as an offense in September, it may not be the same in December. And part of that is changing who you are, figuring out the rust, and, and getting rid of some of that. So. I know it's only been like nine days, what did you say, nine pro days today or, or whatever, but have you noticed like a step forward in that regard with the rust being, being taken off and more of a connection in the team? Yeah, for sure. And it's one of the things we talk about. I mean, the first day we came out here and I, we missed a number of throws to a number of people, all, you know, all three guys. And you say, hey, you're getting a feel for how he comes out of the top of a break, how he may come on an in-cut, how he attacks the football. It's the first time you've thrown to a lot of these guys for all three of those guys. So I think they've certainly seen that growth and that development over the course of the spring. And it certainly needs to continue before September. And I know it's not your position group anymore, but David getting his extension, I, I guess just like what does he bring to this offense, not just him being able to catch the ball, but the way he's improved with his blocking in recent years. Yeah, I mean, I, and he's, you know, obviously a guy I have a lot of respect for, really excited about the opportunity that, that he had. And, uh, 
he earned it. I mean, it's from the way he worked, the way he came out every day and embraced his role and, and was a major part of our success on offense. So uh, he's continued to do that, and, and I don't expect that to change, but was really happy for him.